So, that was Governing Body member Samuel Hurd and Governing Body helper Gary Bro receiving a rather interesting welcome at the International Airport in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I believe this footage was taken just a matter of days ago. It certainly surfaced on social media within the last couple of days. And in fact, the clips that you've just seen are from uh, an Instagram account for the convention. So the footage has been taken by Jehovah's Witnesses, in other words, and it's been posted on social media. So that's what we've just been looking at. And wow, <laughs> what to say about it? I think it's safe to say that this footage is going to cause a stir among current and former Jehovah's Witnesses for two reasons. Firstly, it seems to show a governing body member and a governing body helper receiving adulation, which isn't really how senior members of the organization are supposed to be treated if all are just brothers before Christ and we all have the same standing before Jehovah. That's the first thing, although there is um, somewhat mitigating footage that I need to show you in that connection. The second thing is the whole use of music and dancing in connection with Jehovah's Witness worship. And this too, I'm going to explore in more detail uh, in this video because I think what we're looking at is a fascinating subculture, for want of a better word, to the Jehovah's Witness culture that we're increasingly seeing manifested almost exclusively in international conventions for reasons I'm going to go into. But there is quite clearly a capacity among Jehovah's Witnesses, especially in countries where there is, where the culture allows for more expression in, in dance and in music. There's definitely an undercurrent of creativity, even in the otherwise fairly sterile atmosphere of Jehovah's Witness worship where everything must be very prim and proper and orderly and business-like. So if nothing else what I intend to do in this video is just briefly explore this fascinating subculture that we do see surface admittedly almost exclusively within the world of international conventions. But I mentioned earlier that the footage that we've just seen isn't necessarily just about um, Samuel Hurd and Gary Bro receiving adulation, although in my view they do seem to be singled out uh, to some extent in this video. There is a quote that I wanted to share with you. It's from the March 2017 Watchtower on page 11. It mentions congregation elders, circuit overseers, branch committee members and members of the governing body. And then it says, we do not idolize well-known representatives of the Christian congregation or react in their presence as if angels were standing nearby. And in the next paragraph, it goes on to say, such elders are recognized as humble spiritual shepherds. As evidence of their humility, they refuse to let themselves be treated as celebrities. So I suppose the question is, in this footage, are we seeing Gary Bro and Samuel Hurd uh, refusing to let themselves be treated as celebrities? I'll let you answer that question. It is worth looking though at the next footage which shows seemingly the exact same part of the airport and the same witnesses giving exactly the same treatment it seems to ordinary witnesses. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. Wow. Somebody's not in here. <laughs>
so again it's just remarkable to see those sorts of scenes in connection with uh, an event at which thousands of jehovah's witnesses are supposed to be coming together in worship in the context of the experience of most jehovah's witnesses and most who've spent decades in the jehovah's witness religion who remember things being far more conservative um, again far more sterile and solemn and serious certainly no place for jubilation and and dancing in public uh, to theocratic songs now it should just be noted that the music that they're playing here for those of you who aren't familiar with this with jehovah's witness music it's worth just explaining that there are now two forms of music there are the kingdom songs that are sung at meetings as part of jehovah's witness worship and then there are songs that have been written for jw broadcasting episodes as music videos and these tend to be more i don't know you could say contemporary in style and the music that's being performed at this sending off ceremony seems to be the more contemporary kind of relaxed songs rather than the formal ritualistic kingdom songs although as we're going to see kingdom songs are not it seems off limits when it comes to entertaining delegates at international conventions but nevertheless it is an odd sight or will be an odd sight to many of you watching to see witnesses behaving in this way and just to make it absolutely clear it's not like i frown on this i actually think it's really nice to see people enjoying themselves i think it's nice to see people in a in a group or in a community letting their hair down and dancing and just having fun there's there's never anything bad in my view about just simple innocent fun with friends the only thing that kind of rattles me slightly is why don't all jehovah's witnesses get to have this experience why do we only see, as we're going to see in this video, why do we only see isolated pockets of this sort of fun and this sort of jubilation almost always in connection with international conventions? Why do delegates to international conventions get to be treated in such a, a privileged way, which goes back to what we were saying earlier about people being treated like celebrities? Because even if all of the delegates were receiving the same treatment that Samuel Hurd and Gary Bro were receiving, they were all, in effect, being treated as though they were celebrities, or at least as though they were important people, which, as far as Watchtower is concerned, all the delegates are to be treated in an important way. Why can't all witnesses be treated like that? not just at the international uh, convention in brazil but at all jehovah's witness events why the seeming double standard but i was talking just a moment ago about the different types of songs and how you have kind of more casual contemporary songs which were being sung in this setting and then you have kingdom songs that are basically part of jehovah's witness worship and they are off limits or at least that's the way it was always considered to be that you weren't to mess around with these songs these were part of jehovah's witness worship and so they deserved some degree of esteem and respect so with that in mind i now want to show you some footage that was posted elsewhere on social media of delegates to an international convention i believe in miami being entertained
So the music you've just been listening to is again one of the Kingdom songs. It has the title God's Promise of Paradise. And without wanting to trigger too many of you who are ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, the opening words to the song are a paradise our God has promised by means of Christ's millennial reign when he'll blot out all sin and error, removing death and tears and pain suffice to say when this song is played or in any way performed or sung in jehovah's witness meetings and assemblies and conventions it's never to that sort of beat <laughs> and it's never accompanied by that sort of dancing this is a solemn song of worship to jehovah or to god or that's how it's intended so again, to see witnesses dancing in that way, again, I think it's a wonderful spectacle to see people enjoying themselves in that way. And my own preference would be for that to be the, the norm for all Jehovah's Witnesses. My question is, why isn't it the norm? And why is there such a double standard when it comes to entertaining delegates? And just to explain a little bit more about delegates, so international conventions rather than the standard conventions um, known as regional conventions which i'm currently in the middle of doing my rebuttals for if you haven't already seen my love never fails rebuttals i'm currently up to saturday out of the three days still have sunday to go but conventions are for all jehovah's witnesses to attend but you also have what are known as international conventions of which there's only, I'm going to say, a couple of dozen globally. The idea being that a governing body member will be present at one of these international conventions. So it's a huge honour to be selected as a delegate, basically a representative, uh, to attend one of these conventions where you will most likely get at least some opportunity to either see or be with a governing body member and to be a delegate you have to go through a, and not only do you have to go through an application process where you give details about your morality and about your your standards as a witness you have to be whiter than white um, not just in good standing but in very good standing uh, you also need to be willing to part with a lot of money we're talking thousands of dollars potentially because Watchtower insists that you book your flights and accommodation. I'm going to qualify that. In most cases, to be a delegate, Watchtower insists that you book your travel and accommodation through them because Watchtower reaches their own arrangements with hotels in the host city and with the airlines and you would think that this would make it cheaper for the delegate, but in many cases it seems to be either as expensive or more expensive than it would be if you were to make your own arrangements. And almost certainly what's happening is that Watchtower is taking a, a large cut on the amount of money that delegates are uh are coughing up in order to attend these special events where they get to rub shoulders potentially with a governing body member. So it's a little bit of a racket, quite frankly. And because delegates are such a huge cash cow for the organization, they get this preferential treatment, which involves being taken on tours of the host city and attending these entertainment evenings, an example of which we've just seen there in Miami, where they're being entertained with kingdom music, not just, again, the casual contemporary kind that you see on the JW Broadcasting episodes, but in the example that we've just seen, the more formal ritual songs have been adapted into kind of a more catchy, dancey <laughs> beat. And I'm going to read you a quote. This is from the announcements of the 2005 Our Kingdom Ministry, uh, the March Kingdom Ministry. There was a bullet point that read, 
A number of publishers have telephoned the branch office regarding certain recordings of Kingdom songs sung in a popular style that are presently being circulated among Jehovah's Witnesses. They wonder if these recordings have the organization's approval. We are aware of these recordings and would like to inform you that they do not have our approval. Please do not circulate or download these recordings from the internet. We trust this information will clarify matters. So this was the stand on kind of popularized um, jazzed up versions of Kingdom Songs circa 2005. We don't approve. I guess you could argue that Watchtower may have been concerned here with copyright and just with these recordings being unauthorized. But they do specifically mention the, the songs being sung in a popular style. And this would seem to indicate that the concern was not just about the songs being unauthorized and sung by just about anybody, but also the fact that they were done in the wrong way, the way that we manifestly see being performed um, at this Miami uh, delegates event, where you have, again, a song that is intended to be used in worship to praise Jehovah basically being used as a kind of samba dance event <laughs> which again is just polar opposites to the way I was raised to think of this music. Now you might be thinking if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this well this is surely just a one-off maybe at this particular convention a few brothers in a few convention locations were just getting carried away um, and normality will be resumed at some point. Well, first of all, what we've been looking at in the Miami event are officially organized by Watchtower events for entertaining delegates. So don't think that this isn't authorized. It very much is there will have been elders and branch personnel involved in making sure all of the arrangements were met with Watchtower's approval. But as we're going to see in the following clips, <laughs> there are even more outrageous examples of the way the rules can be bent when it comes to entertaining international convention delegates, including in kingdom halls. <laughs> So yes, you have there Jehovah's Witnesses dancing in Kingdom Halls on the platform at a place that is reserved for worshipping Jehovah, again, in a, usually in a very conservative, serious way. But because the International Convention delegates are in town and they're paying big bucks, um, the rule book just flies out of the window. And in case you think I'm exaggerating that there is such a rule book, allow me to read to you a, another quote. And this is also from a kingdom ministry, this time 2008. And it's in relation to the use of kingdom halls for weddings. And it says, To make sure that the wedding reflects well on our dignified God, the couple should discuss the wedding arrangements with the service committee before they are finalised. Though the elders will not try to impose their personal preferences upon the couple, if anything objectionable is being planned, adjustments should be made. Only music selected from kingdom melodies or that is found in our songbook may be used. So just to clarify, if you're a young Jehovah's Witness couple and you want to get married in a kingdom hall, 
you're only allowed music for the ceremony that is from Kingdom Melodies or the Songbook. Well, if if that's so, why is it one rule for Jehovah's Witness couples getting married in a Kingdom Hall and another rule for entertaining international convention delegates? In one example, they're line dancing on the stage where these wedding talks are given, by the way. They're line dancing on the stage to Footloose. And in the other one, uh, you have Sisters Singing Happy by Pharrell Williams, who, by the way, despite being an extremely talented uh, singer, has a lifestyle that, let's put it this way, it does not conform to witness standards. And without wanting to go into too much detail on entertainment, one of the big things you were told as a young Jehovah's Witness growing up in this religion is that it's not just about the lyrics of the song, it's about the lifestyle of the artist. Does the lifestyle of the artist entirely dishonor Jehovah? Would we be bringing shame on Jehovah by having this artist's material in our homes? If so, burn or bin your CD collection from that particular artist. So that's, that's the fanaticism with which music by quote-unquote worldly artists is treated. But again, international convention delegates spending big bucks, let's throw that rule book out of the window because these people need to be entertained. And just as a side note on Pharrell Williams, this is not the only video that you can find on YouTube of Jehovah's Witnesses dancing to the song Happy. This is not a hoax. I haven't made this up. All you need to do to watch this whole video is type into the YouTube search Happy Bethel and you're going to find this video very near the top of the recommended videos. These are actual Bethelites being filmed in a musical montage dancing around Bethel. Again, I have no objections to them doing this. In fact, I did uh, an apostate version of this same thing where apostates from all over the world including myself were dancing to this song but maybe we've got more freedom to do that because we don't judge Pharrell Williams lifestyle and songs in quite the same way <laughs> that Jehovah's Witnesses do again it's just more than anything for me the double standards I don't have a problem with singing and dancing and people enjoying themselves I don't have a problem with a lavish send-off for fellow worshippers at an airport. I don't even have a problem with Jehovah's Witnesses dancing in kingdom halls, aside from the fact that not all witnesses are allowed to dance to worldly music in kingdom halls. This is a very lopsided arrangement where, again, only a privileged few are allowed to have this sort of fun and the rest must just stick to the regular way of doing things, which is to be very conservative and very serious and not really let, let their hair down all that much. So just a few things to share with you. Again, just a fascinating kind of subculture of the Jehovah's Witness culture that isn't really dealt with a great deal. I do refer to it every now and then, but with this footage of Samuel Heard dancing, I thought, why not do a video on this? So I hope you found it helpful and interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the John Cedars channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching.